For God's people everywhere to come together as a family, one body of believers to worship Him in spirit and in truth. You know, Psalm 122 says, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord just to give thanks to the name of the Lord. And I believe it is also a good reason for us to be here today. Good morning, friends. Welcome. I am Evangelist Davis Worley, and on behalf of the saints who worship in Sandtown, West Baltimore, Maryland. I pray the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ upon you all, and I bid you greetings. We welcome you, friends, to our worship via live stream. It is our pleasure, our delight, to have you with us, to invite you into our worship service, and we are delighted that you have chosen to spend just a few moments of your time with us today. Friends, we know that there are many other things that you could be doing, but God placed it on your heart to visit with us. And while we would have preferred to be with you in person, we are thankful, friends, for your interest and your desire to worship with us. Friends, churches of Christ all around the world have had to modify how they worship due to the coronavirus. Friends, this threat is still real. This threat is still real. And we all must take it seriously. So it is wise that we take the necessary precautions to protect ourselves against becoming infected, but also that we do not unknowingly endanger the lives of others. So until such time, friends, uh, that we can safely assemble ourselves together, we will continue to worship God in spirit and in truth by social media stream and other means that are available to us. Friends, we are determined to give God the praise that only he deserves by any means necessary. Friends, our God is great and worthy to be praised. Besides him, there are no other gods. And we are determined to honor him as we have been taught by example of those before us. According to Acts chapter number 20, verse number 7, and 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2, upon the first day of the week. Friends, our love for Jesus keeps us strong, encouraged, uplifted, focused on praising him. No matter the obstacles, viruses, germs, disease, pestilence, or unreliability of men. Friends, our God is a conqueror. He's a shield, a defender. He's a comforter. He's a strong defense. He's a fortress, a mighty warrior. He's king of kings and lord of lords. He hears the cry of his children, and he comes to our defense. First Peter chapter 3, verse number 12 tells us that the eyes, my friends, of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to our prayers. But the face of the, of the Lord is against those who do evil. Friends, our God has never, ever lost a battle, and he never, ever will. Let's pray together. O oh Lord, our God, almighty, all-glorious, most holy, and eternal, the God of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we humble ourselves beneath your throne of grace on this morning, Father, just thanking you for yet another day that you have awakened us, strengthened our bodies, Father, and allowed us to assemble ourselves to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we are eternally grateful for all that you have done and all that you continue to do in our lives. 
We thank you so much, Father, for your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who makes all things possible for us with you. And Father, we humbly ask now that you would please forgive us of our many sins, Father. We know that we have sinned against you either in word, thought, or deed. We repent of our sins, Father, and we humbly ask that you would do as you have already promised us in your word, that if we repent of our sins, you will be just to forgive us and remember our sins no more. Father, we just thank you so much for a nation that we can live in, uh, that we can worship you without fear, Father, without any uh, 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 danger, without any type of reproach, Father, that we can worship you, that we can give you the glory, the honor, and the praise that you have commanded us to, Father. So we just thank you, Father, for this nation that we are in. Thank you for the peace that we enjoy amongst ourselves, Father, but we know that there are many problems as well that we struggle with. And we pray, Father, that our leadership here in this nation, the leaders all around the world, might look to you, Father, for guidance, for instruction, for wisdom in how to properly lead in a godly way. Father, we pray for all those who are still battling this uh, deadly virus. We pray for all those scientists, Father, the virologists, everyone who is involved, our first responders. Father, please bless our doctors, our nurses. Protect their families, Father. Keep them in good health and good strength. We pray for those who have lost loved ones due to this deadly virus, Father. And we're just asking that your peace and your comfort, Father, be upon them. And Father, we pray for the lives that were lost in the senseless tragedies in Colorado and in Georgia. We pray for the families, Father. We pray, Father, for those who would commit such atrocities, that you might touch their heart, that they might hear the life-saving gospel message of your Son before it is eternally too late. Father, please be with us now as we continue in this worship service unto you. Father, we ask that your Spirit will rest upon us and guide us in the direction that you would have us to go. It is in the mighty and matchless name of your Son, our Lord, our Savior, our High Priest, and our King, Jesus the Christ, that we do humbly pray. Amen. Friends, welcome to the Church of Christ. Relax, be at ease, be comforted, and find peace for your troubled soul. Friends, please join us now as we worship God in congregational singing with song leaders from all over the Church of Christ as we lift up our voices in holy praise to God in songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. I woke up this morning with my mind.
the South Side Church of Christ in Baltimore, Maryland. Friends, Brother Burrell has taken the time to put together a sermonic discourse of exaltation for our listening edification through God's holy and divine word. Friends, our Brother Burrell is a great teacher, marvelous teacher of God's word, a wonderful orator and all-around mighty servant of God. Brother Burrell is an avid supporter and welcome speaker here in the Church of Christ in Sandtown. I love my brother because he is an unapologetic defender of the gospel of Christ. That's right. He stands on God's word, and I love that. He's a mighty warrior on the battlefield, and today he will bring us another message. So, friends, we pray that you will enjoy his powerful message after the singing of one more song, one more song. The next voice you hear will be that of our beloved brother, the mighty minister of the gospel of Christ, Brother Reggie Burrell Jr. of the Southside Church of Christ in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm going to have you
over there, Brother Davis Wall and his congregation, feeding that neighborhood and that God's vineyard over there. I want to thank him so much for giving me another opportunity, like I said, to bring you God's word. Amen. So, before we get started, we always like to say uh, we want to give God's praise and honor. We want to um, go to God in prayer on behalf of uh, the, the church and on behalf of those who may be listening and those who may be watching, we are truly thankful you are on a guest today. We are thankful that you are here with us. Uh, if we hear anything today uh, before we pray, if you hear anything today, um, be f- uh, feel free to call us if it if it sounds you know different or something new, whatever, and, you, and you're questionable about it. Feel free to call the numbers that you may see at the end of the service, and we'll give you a biblical que- I mean, answer to your biblical question. I guarantee. You. So again, we are thankful that you're here with us today. Those who may be watching, those who may be listening, in, um, you are honored guests, and, and uh, we're ecstatic about that. And we want to give God the praise, and we pray that you be encouraged. 
all the way at the end of the service to continue with God. Amen. Amen. So let us go to God in prayer before we get started. Most wise and wonderful Father God, we come to you again today, O oh Father, to say thank you for being the great God that you are. We want to say thank you for being our Father. We want to say thank you for, for your Son, Jesus Christ, our, our Lord and our Savior. Uh, we want to thank you, O oh Father, for the sacrifice excuse me, that he has made on our behalf by, by paying a debt that he did not owe for those who owe such as you and I, but we could not pay. Father, we are thankful for the sacrifice on, on, on our behalf. Uh, we pray, oh Father, that we will be careful today to give your name to honor and praise and all that is so rightly due to your Father. We pray that we will worship you in spirit and the truth today through your son's um, lessons and his teachings, oh Father God, the, the gospel of Christ, oh Father. We pray that we will be found pleasing to you today. We pray that your um, spirit will lead us today and guide our hearts and our minds, oh Father God that we may have an understanding of thus saith the Lord, that we may apply those things to our daily lives, that we may be found faithful and better today than we have been in the past, O oh, Father. We pray for your forgiveness in our life today, O oh, Father, for we all sin and fall short of your glory, O oh, Father God. And we confess our sins to you today, O oh, Father, because we know that you are faithful to forgive. Father, again, we ask that you will uh, um, uh, prepare our minds and our hearts today that we may receive Receive your word with understanding today, O oh Father God. We pray that you will bless those who may be sick, those who may be shut in, those who may be incarcerated, those who may have lost loved ones, O oh Father God, especially due to this COVID uh, uh, um, disease that's going around. May you comfort us, may you watch over us, may you find a cure for us, O oh Father God, that, and keep us, O oh Father God, uh, that we may give your name the glory and praise and honor that is so richly right to do. Again, we thank you so much. Is these and all prayers we ask. We're asking the first name of our race, Lord, Savior, High Priest, and King Jesus the Christ. Together, let us say amen. Now, let me wake up. I got my, my ginger and my my garlic tea with me. And uh, got my word of God with me. I pray that you got your word of God, your copy of God's word, and you got a pen and paper, pencil and paper, as Brother Wally like to say, take copious notes. That's a whole lot of notes. Um, so you can um, ask questions at the end of the service. Amen. So let us get started today. You know, because it's so important that you out there who are listening and those who are watching, uh, especially those who are watching and especially those who are listening. So that covers all y'all, don't it? Yes, it does. It's important that you put your ears on today because I have something important to say. Thus saith the Lord. That's what I got to say. God's word. I'm trying to bring you the truth about a lie today. And that's the sermon title for the day. The truth about a lie. The truth about a lie. Why? Because there's too many lies that's going around. There's too many lies that's been told. There's too many lies that's been led people down the wrong road in the wrong direction. And at the at the end of the day, they're going to be at a dead end. And I put emphasis on the word dead. They're going to be dead end. So I pray that you got your ears on the day and you're listening attentively. You got your notes. And you like the Bereans like Brother Wooler always say, check us out. And check me out. And make sure what I'm saying is thus saith the Lord. Check your scriptures. And when I give scripture text, write them down. We'll try to be slow about it, but write them down. Um, try not to be too long, but you know how Brother Reggie is. I'm just going to give it to you like it is. If you got to leave, you got to leave. But I pray that you stay. Because it's important. It's going to be a blessing to you if you stay. And listen to God's word. Amen. Amen. So, let us get started. Today, we're going to come out of the book of Matthew. That's where we're going to start from, the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 23. Matthew 21 and 23 is what I want. We're going to start there with Matthew 21 and 23. Is that all right with you all? And I, and I got my notes, and I'm clicking, and I'm plucking, and I'm doing these things uh, uh, so that you can get a better understanding of God's word clearly, so I gotta go through my notes as well as we as we talk. 
Um, so, so just um, listen up um, carefully and, and follow along. So again, our scripture text today for those who want to write it down, we're looking at Matthew chapter 21. We're going to start at verse 23. Now, I guess you want to know why I'm going to start at verse 23. You know, the, uh, 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 it's important because um, you know, Brother Wally spoke of it last week about the authority of Christ and, and, and the authority of God's word. And it's important that you all understand today that, that there's a, some authority that needs to be uh, recognized when we're dealing with um, religious and spiritual things. Amen. Amen. So, sermon title again for those who may, that, uh, may have missed it. The truth about the lie. And the scripture text we are launching from today will be Matthew chapter 21, verse 23. Amen. So, let's do a little uh, uh, reading here. And, and, and see what we find. Uh, 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 it, it's just that simple. Amen. Amen. So, got on my old man glasses this morning, and, and I pray that you all are, are ready and got your word to follow along. Now, I'm going to explain something to us as we go along. Uh, I like to exegete the scriptures, and I like to just explain what I'm doing. So, here we, we want to look at the authority. Now, think of it. Now, I want you to put your ears on now and think of this. Now, I'm going to use my house. Now, I'm the head of my house. Let me say it too loud. I'm the head of my house. And, 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 and what usually goes on in a man's house, usually if he's the head or whoever's the head for that matter, they usually have set rules and regulations in their house. And so... You, if you're the head and you don't set rules in your house, you're not going to let any other man come in and change your rules and regulations of your house because you have authority of your house. Uh, I, I guess you can understand where I'm coming from. Amen. You get the point. Uh, uh, it's your house. You set rules. Nobody else going to come in from the outside and, and change rules in your house. So that's the same thing with God's house. That's the same thing with the church. You know, if you read your scripture text in, um, you know, Ephesians 1, 23, 18 through uh, 120, uh, 23, Colossians and, uh, 1, 22 and all, they talk about Jesus being a head of the church. And so we understand that if there's a head, then usually all things uh, move according to the authorization or the authority of the head. You know, like we have a head on our body, and if I want to pick up this Bible, uh, my 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 hands are the ones who's picking the Bible up. But uh, my hands are not the ones giving itself the authority to pick up the book. But the authority is coming from the head. So so we should do the same thing in church and in God's house. Is not do anything unless we're authorized to do it by the head who owns the house. Amen. Because if you're trying to do anything otherwise and other than the rules of the house, guess what? You're not in conjunction with the rules of the house. There's going to be some consequences. Uh, it's just that simple. Uh, you can't come to my house and change my rules. You're going to run into some consequences. And I'm quite sure if I go to your house and try to change rules in your house, I'm going to run into some consequences. It's just that simple. Amen. So let us move on. Brother Reggie like to talk. Now, uh, I'm already 10 minutes in and I ain't said nothing. So, now, Matthew chapter 21, verse 23. Let's read for emphasis sake. Amen. I'm going to go there and you give me a little time to get back to where I started from. And, and I'm, I'm going to meet you there. I'm going to meet you at chapter 21, verse 23 of the book of Matthew. And, and I'm reading from the recovery. I'm going to be reading from the New King James. And, and you maybe look at the King James. So we're going to be peeping around. Amen. Amen. So, chapter 21, Matthew, verse 23. Let's start there. And when he came into the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority? Do you do these things? And who gave you this authority? Now let me let me stop right there, and, and I'm going to move on quickly, or, 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 or 
move on and progressively and see what's going on. You see, they trying to question Jesus about his authority and ask him why did he do the things or who gave him the authority to do the things that he did. So you remember back over there in, uh, in verse 12 when he uh, went into the temple and, and he expelled all of the money changers out of the house, turned the tables over and everything, said, you know, making my father's house a den of thieves. And so they want to know who, who gave him authority to do this stuff. So he said, well, you know what? I already know these people. I know who they are and what they are. So if I let them continue on in their mess, they might uh, answer their own question uh, and they're going to trap their own selves in their own deceit trying to trap me. So let's continue on. So Jesus, he, he says in, in, in verse 24, he says to them, uh, well, and Jesus answered and said to them, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me. I also would tell you by what authority I do these things. So Jesus thought that was fair, and he knew what the deal was with him anyway. He knew where it was going, where they were going, and what they were going to say. So anyway, he goes on and said, verse 25, The baptism of John, from where did it come from? From heaven or from men? And they reason among themselves, saying, hmm, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? In verse 26, but if we say from men, we fear the crowd, for all hold John as a prophet. In verse 27, and they answered Jesus and said, we do not know. We cannot tell. And he too said to them, neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. Well, let's hold up for a minute. They said that they didn't know. They couldn't tell. Well, they lying. Because they know. They was afraid uh, 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 if they said, if he was from heaven, why did they believe him? Because John is a man uh, who came from God, right? John the Baptist, John, the one who's crying in the wilderness, was prophesied to come. So he's a man coming in the righteousness of God, coming by way of righteousness. His words are righteousness. He's walking in righteousness. But they were afraid because they didn't believe him. So they couldn't answer because he's going to say, well, why didn't you believe him? Then he said, well, if we say it was from them, they're going to say, well, John was considered a prophet. Why didn't you follow them? So they said, we cannot tell. So they liars. See, this lies is, is, is a rough thing. There's too many lies, like I said, of being told. And here, they're trying to check Jesus' authority, and they're lying in the midst of calling themselves, holding their own authority. So anyway, y'all get the point. This is about this authority. And I'm trying to tell us today, in today's world, that authority means something. Just like it meant then, it means something today. But we take authority lightly. We don't believe in the authority of Jesus. We don't believe in the authority of God, although we act like it. We say it, but we don't believe it. I'm going to show that and prove that. The truth about the lie. So you understand where I'm coming from, Matthew 21, 23. It's authority that's important. Uh, uh, uh. That's the driving force today, the authority. Now. Turn with me, if you will, to 1 Corinthians 15, 27. 1 Corinthians 15, 27. Turn with me there. If you got your book, turn. 15, verse 27. Okay? Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, I want, I believe. Yeah. So let's see what it says. For he hath put all things under his feet. 
But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did not put, I mean, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. What are you saying, preacher? All I'm saying is that God gave Jesus the authority. And when it's time to close shop, the end of the world, if you will, probation period is over, grace's period is over, no more mercy, then Jesus is going to have to give up the authority that was given to him. Uh, you see that? God put the authority under him. Look at me. You remember Matthew, the Great Commission? Matthew 28. What did it say over the 18? And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All authority and all power is given with unto me in heaven and in earth. You see that? All, not some, but all. All authority, all power. And now he's saying that eventually I'm going to have to give that back to the one who gave it to me. So this is important that you understand the authority that he didn't just come on his own, but God gave him that. And authority he gave to those apostles to preach the truth because they lived amongst the lies like you and I are doing today. And I'm finding out more and more that people are loving a lie more than they are the truth. You got what I'm saying? The authority was given to Jesus. Now that means that we need to listen to Jesus. Like they did then, we need to listen to Jesus today. And I'm watching and I'm listening that a lot of my friends and family members and people on Facebook and all these social media, they're not listening to Jesus. They say they are. But when I listen and read what they're posting and what they're saying and that it's obvious that they're not following the word of God. I'm just saying. Read your book. Be like the Bereans. Check what I'm saying. There's too many of y'all out there that are not following the word of God. Y'all saying y'all believe and y'all got a zeal for God. But as Paul said, not according to the knowledge of God. Y'all going about to establish your own righteousness and have not submitted yourself to the righteousness of God. I don't know what y'all problem is, but uh, y'all better get right for it's everlasting too late. Brother Reggie said it. Now let's move on. Because I haven't even started my sermon yet. Are we 20 minutes in already? Sermon is only 20 minutes long. First, I got one point, two point, three point, and lessons yours. Amen. So let's try to get with it right now. My first point today. Every lie has a source. My second point, the truth unites, that's part A, and part B, but the lie separates. The truth unites and separates, but the lie separates. And my point three, the lie looks like the truth. The lie looks like the truth. So, to my first point, every lie has a source. Turn with me to the book of John. See, you know, you, you know how when people tell you stuff and you say, that's a lie. Who told you that? You know, that's a source somewhere. The lie, every lie has a source. And sometimes when you get to the bottom of that 
source and you find out who told a lie. So, oh boy, sometimes some people are in trouble. Look at the book of John, chapter 8. You remember Jesus was trying to tell these people that, you know, they defending and trying to say who they were. They were uh, Abraham's children. They were never under bondage and, and they, they never in bondage. And Jesus said, you know, the truth going to make you free. And they said, they ain't never been in bondage. We was always free. They lying in. They lying now. But Jesus was telling them, wait a minute. If you believed and was listening to what was being said in the scriptures about me, you wouldn't have the heart that you have. You trying to kill me, so that means you trying to be like your daddy, the devil. So let's see what John says uh, uh, about the devil. You see, because uh, 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 every lie has a source. Chapter 8 of John. And I will read you the whole story, but for time's sake, look at verse 44. You are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks the lie, in some books, a lie, which is the lie. He speaks it out of his own possessions, his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. So you see, when we tell these so-called little white lies and all these other things, guess what? Our daddy gave us that lie. We got it out of his resources. You know, it was it was taught. Uh, on the, um, Brother Brent taught us back in the day, Brother Brent Southside Church of Christ, Richard Brent taught us uh, uh, one time before about, you know, like Santa Claus doing, you know, he got his big old bag and there's all these things in there and everything, but when he reaches in there, he pulls out his own thing, you know, these things in there belong to him. And that's what Jesus is saying, John is saying that, 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 the, the devil is the father of the lies. And when he speaks the lie or a lie, he speaks out of his own possession, out of his own resources. So you got to be careful what you say out your mouth because if it's a lie, guess what? Your daddy gave it to you. And, and, you, can, and you can profess that, that you follow Jesus. But if you're lying, that means that the, 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 the other guy, your daddy, the, the 844, the devil, said, uh, 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 you know, that's where you got it from. So, every lie has a source. And, and we need to understand that. You know, these little white lies and, and big lies and any old kind of lie. And you hear every Sunday at some of these places. I know that's what they're doing every Sunday at these places because they flock in there every Sunday. They're not flocking to the truth. They flock into the lies. All these different congregations out here, these different denominational, all these different names of these different establishments, they were founded uh, all contrary to the, the, the church that was prophesied in the Bible. If your church wasn't prophesied back in the Old Testament that it was going to be here today, guess what? You're in the wrong place. I mean, that's what the books say. The truth about the lie is that if your church wasn't prophesied in the Bible, then you're at the wrong place. You need to check your leadership or those who you call your leaders and ask them, was our church prophesied in the Bible? If so, show me. You know, check it. Be like the Bereans. This ain't about the people. This ain't about the person. You know how we lie to one another and do bad things? It ain't that's that spirit that's in us. Jesus said, and Paul says, or Peter says rather, to check the spirits by the spirits. You know? It, 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 we need to check the spirit by the spirit. Because it's important. You need to know who who's leading and who's being led and how you're being led. And, and all those things, because if you're being led by the wrong people, the wrong thing, the wrong teaching, the wrong doctrine, and guess what? 
you want to be at a, a, a dead end. I mean, it's just that simple. I, I didn't write the book. Anyway, y'all get the point, right? Every lie, every lie has a, a, a source. Every lie has a source. And, and, and we need to understand that, that every lie has a source. Because uh, if, if you get it wrong, oh, you might end up in the wrong place at the end of the day. And, and, and God wants every man to be saved. But we can see based on a lie, every man don't want to be saved. Okay, so move on. Uh, 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 you get the picture. Every lie has a source. Amen. My second point. The truth does what? It unites and it also separates. Uh, let's take one look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and look at verse 10. Uh, I mean, I could go deep into this today and we could talk about this, but for time's sake, I want you to, to, to understand uh, it's about the authority and it's about the truth about the lie. And so far, uh, uh, a lot of people have been believing a lie based on wrong authority, doing things by the wrong authority. Uh, whoever authorizing to do these things are the wrong authority. And, 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 and we need to understand uh, the truth about the lie. Uh, there's a lot of churches going on teaching a lot of different things. And it's a lie. Uh, it's only one truth, not a lot of truths. One truth. Many lies, but one truth. Uh, 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 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 says what? Paul is saying what? Now I beseech you brethren, or you brothers, through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you do what? That you speak the same thing. Now hold up. I'm not speaking the same thing the Pope's speaking. Pope ain't speaking the same thing I'm speaking. Over there and, and Bishop this one, that one, and, and you you know what I'm talking about. Ain't none of them speaking the same thing. They all speaking something different. But Paul says, Now I beseech you, brothers, through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no what? Divisions among you. But that you all be attuned and joined in the same mind and in the same judgment, the same opinion. Uh, you see, the truth is going to unite people. And I said the truth also separates. Why? Because let's take a look at Matthew. Let's take a look at Matthew. See, the truth separates just as well as it unites. But the lie, it just separates. But the, 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 the truth that separates and unites, there's a purpose for the separation. Let's take a quick look. At uh, 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 Matthew, and I want to look at Matthew, and I want to look at Matthew chapter ten. And, 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 and if you got your pencils, your books, uh, turn with me uh, to chapter ten, book of Matthew, and let's take a look at what is it, verse thirty-four, and and, and I want to verse thirty-five. Do not think. That I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. What sword do? It cut. Usually, if you cut through, it's going to cut you in half. It separates. For I have come to set men at variance, odds. A man against his father. And a daughter against her mother. And daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He ain't trying to start trouble with church and people out there. That's not what it means. 36. A man's enemies will be those of his own household. Isn't that true in a lot of places? See, even with a godly child and an ungodly father, 
He's going to hate that godly child. Those who are in the house who are godly and those who are ungodly, they are at odds. 37. He who loves father or mother above me is not worthy for me, and he who loves son or daughter above me is not worthy of me. So, so I'm just, you know, I, I, I want to point that out. If that's all right, because either you're going to be together as one, according to what's written, or you're going to be separated according to what's written. Now let's look at part B of my second point. The truth lies and separates. That's part A. Let's see what Matthew has to say about the lie that separates. All right? Turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 21. And I'm going to go down to 28. Now remember, we started in 23 about the authority. Now look at verse 28 and down because this is the lesson. Jesus points out salvation to all mankind. He's letting us all know that we all need salvation. We all are sinners. But Look at the analogy or the parable that, is that, 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 that Jesus laid out. And look at the two, the, the distinction. I want you to carefully listen and look at this. Because this is where uh, uh, the meat of the story is really. Okay. It, it, it's in this here. Uh, the truth unites and separates, remember. But the lie separates. But let's look at this discourse here again chapter 21 of the book of matthew starting in verse 28 amen so it says and this here is this is the shifting of birthrights uh between the two you know you could think of some birthrights back in the old testament and and how things were shifted. So we're going to look at this here. The birthright has been shifted. Uh, 28. But what do you think? Now what do you think. About Jesus. Huh? And listen to this closely. Jesus laying out a story. What do you think? A man had two children. Two sons. And he came to his first son and he said, child, go today. Amen. For what? And work in the vineyard. This is what he's saying now. This is the representation. This is God's. Representation. Okay, this is God. God got these two. He's sending them out to work. But what do you think, verse 28? A man had two children, two sons, and he came to his first son and said, Child, son, go today out and, and work in the yard, in the vineyard. And verse 29, and he answered and said, I do not want to go. I do not want to. I will not go. Yet later he regretted and he went. Let's stop right there for a sec. He later regretted and then decided to go. He had enough time to think of his actions and what he did. And, and then he began to feel sorrowful about disrespecting his father and not doing what he said. Uh, 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 not doing what his father asked him to do when his father asked him to do it. He he gave him some back lip, if you will. He, he answered said, I do not want to. I won't go. But later he went. But then he came to the second son, to the other son, and he said, likewise. And he answered and said, I will, sir. 
But he did not go. Now, one was disobedient, insolent, talking trash, contemptible, whatever it may be. And the other one was a hypocrite. But watch what Jesus says. But he said, well, which of the two did the will of the Father? One said he won't go, but he went. And the other said he will go, but didn't go. So which one of the two did the will of the Father? They said the first. And Jesus said to them, hmm, Truly I said to you that the tax collectors and the harlots are going into the kingdom of God before you. And this is back then talking to these Jews. And this is the kind of same thing we're trying to tell people today. Now let's look at the two sons. One said, I do not want to go, but went. Well, see, that's the representation of us today as sinners. All of us are sinners. And our, our answer to God and to go to God is usually, I ain't going. I ain't got time for God. I don't want to be bothered with that nonsense, church life and all that. I ain't trying to live that life. That's what we said. And that's what he's saying. I won't go. I will not go. I don't want to go. I don't want to be bothered. But then later in life, life starts beating you up and you start seeing things differently and, and, and you wonder why you're going down this dark road and things ain't working out right for you. Something missing in your life. That's what I felt like, that I was missing something. And then one of the members of the church came and said, you're missing God in your life. He gave me the right answer. And I'm trying to tell you today, some of y'all out there missing God in your life. That's what your problem is. Going down the wrong road, telling all these lies, believing in lies, and going to these places who's telling lies. You need God in your life. True God, the true word of God. Not this nonsense, this false teaching. And the, the teaching you just come to church on Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter and all that stuff. Uh, let me move on. So you see, uh, 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 he wanted to know who did the father's will. Which one, which other two children? Because one was a hypocrite and one was disobedient. Well, uh, what he's saying is this. Jesus is trying to let us both know that all of us are sinners. Them two, although one said he wouldn't go, but went anyway, what he did, he's like us who said, oh, I ain't going to be bothered, but we repented, and we accepted the gospel of Christ, obeyed the prerequisites of the gospel of Christ, and we were saved. We embraced the gospel of Christ, and we were saved. That's what he's saying here. And then the other son, he represents those Jews and those Pharisees and those false teachers out here today, all these different denominational churches, the Pope and all these other people that ain't following the doctrine of Christ. That's what the other son is representing. He said that uh, uh, I will go and didn't go. He a hypocrite. He's saying all the good things that he's supposed to say he made a good stand and he professed right and did, I'm going to do it, but he performed not. He did not. He did nothing according to uh, what his father wanted him to do. He told him, yeah, I'm going. It never went. The Jews described the first, oh, they had the first pick, first choice of salvation. They turned it down. That's how you and I got here. Through their unbelief. It's the faith that we had in Jesus that got us in. But it was their unbelief in Jesus that kicking them out and keeping them out. These false teachers today, these two different sons, these denominational, the Church of Christ, they had two different sons. This one professing that he, Lord, Lord. Matthew 7, 21 said, all y'all who profess and holler, Lord, Lord, ain't going to enter in. 
But those who do the will of my Father over here, Jesus is trying to tell you, like the one who said that he ain't going but went afterwards. He repented and went. He understood. He, he, he got the truth told to him. He accepted the truth. We're trying to tell you this. I got friends and family out there. I've been trying to tell them this for years. Noah been preaching for 120 years. Same old story. He didn't change. I've been doing this almost 20 years. I ain't going to change. That's preachers I have been doing it 67 years, 30 years. They ain't changing. Paul and Jesus, they didn't change. Peter didn't change. John the Baptist didn't change. They all brought the truth. And these people out here believe in a lie today like some of them did back then. Those who believe the lie then, they're still dead. They ran into a dead end. All y'all who believe in a lie today, you're going to a dead end. You know, once the curtains is closed and, and Jesus is come and cracked the sky and God said, okay, this is it, judgment time. Where y'all going to stand with that lie? I'm, we're trying to tell you the truth now. There's one doctrine, one church, one body. You better get into the church that's in the Bible. You know, people always get mad at us. Y'all talking about the Church of Christ is the only one going to heaven. We're trying to tell you the only church that's in the Bible is going to heaven. You need to get in that church. You call it what you want, but you need to get into it. We're trying to tell you it's the Church of Christ, the body of Christ. Get into it. That's what Jesus is trying to point to us today which, with this parable of these two sons. And we see it today. I mean, I see it all the time. We fight this daily. I mean, we understand you, you, the, you guys out there that got the zeal for God going to these places on every Sunday. I can see your zeal. I listen to what y'all say. I read what you write. But then when I tell you that this contrary to what's written, y'all ignore what I say and act like I ain't said nothing. That's fine and dandy too. That's what they did with John the Baptist. That's what they did with Jesus. That's what they did with Elijah. And that's what they did with Samuel and, and Jeremiah and all of them. They ignore what they say. They did it with Noah. Ignore him. Fine. But we know at the end of the day, God's word is God's word. This is John 12, 40. He said, uh, look, I don't want y'all to say I said it. Write it down. And while you write it down, let's go visit it. Uh, because uh, I posted up uh, a couple of days ago on Facebook, prove it with scripture. Uh, let's prove it with scripture. Go to the book of John, chapter 12, verse 48. This ain't in my sermon. This is a, a, a extra a, a bonus for you. Uh, chapter 12, verse 48. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has one who judges him. The word which I have spoken, that will judge him in the last day. These words are going to judge you in the last day. I hope you are reading. I hope you're studying. Study to show thyself approved under God, not under men. You got to look around these places, all these different churches, and these different names on these churches. We supposed to do this in memory of Jesus, not these other people's names posted up on on these places. Go around in your city and state, look around. You can see some names up, man. You ain't gonna find them in the Bible. You ain't gonna find that church in the Bible. You can find one church, and we're trying to tell you, get it right for us, everlasting too late. You got that zeal for God? Fine, that's great. You can keep that zeal. But do it according to truth. Stop believing a lie, living a lie, accepting a lie, and repeating a lie. I, I watched some lies today. I read some lies today. I done already told these people the truth, and they still posting and telling lies. Go to show them that nobody studying. Nobody really care. I hope you're listening. My third point. I'm already 45 minutes in. It's time to go. My third point. The lie looks like the truth. Turn with me, uh, with me to the book of Romans, chapter 1. Uh, we're going to try to get through this.
chapter 1 of the book of Romans. Turn with me. Hmm? Chapter 1, verse 25. Amen. The book of Romans, my third point. The lie looks like the truth. Uh, 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 uh. This is about condemnation uh, on mankind generally. It was uh, on mankind. Uh, it was on those who are self-righteousness, like some of these people out here today. Uh, and it's on religious. It's specifically on religious today. Uh, so, so let's, let's look at what's going on generally. Um, God says in verse 25 of book of Romans chapter one, let's start at 24. Cause, cause, excuse me now for emphasis sake and for context sake, I know you got time. I'm going to try to read fast if that's okay with you. I said verse 25, but for context. For context, start at 18. Come on down. All right. Some of y'all might read faster than me. Y'all might be already finished. So 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven upon all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold down the truth in unrighteousness, because that which is known of God is manifest within them. For God manifested it to them for the invisible things of him. Both his eternal power and divine characteristics have been clearly seen since the creation of the world, being perceived by the things made so that they would be without excuse. So just look around, church and people. You all see things out there that are made naturally. God made those things. And there would be no excuse. Then he's in verse 21. Because though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. Uh-oh. Or thanked him but rather became vain in their reasoning and their heart lacking understanding and was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged or changed the glory of the incorruptible God into the likeness of images of incorruptible man and of birds and four-footed animals and reptiles. They done uh, start worshiping statues and stuff. Stone and wood. They made it and then they turned around and worship it. What kind of sense does that make? I made up some pottery and the stuff in clay and ceramics class, but I ain't gonna go turn around and go worship it. Anyway, verse 24. Therefore God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to uncleanliness, so that they dishonored their bodies among themselves. Now, now watch this. Because it's a lot that's going on. We're supposed to accept it as it's okay in the world. It's a lie. Look at verse 25. Who exchanged the truth of God for the lie? And who worshiped and served the creation rather than the creator? Who is blessed forever. Amen. Therefore God, verse 26, gave them up to what? Passions of dishonor for their females exchange the natural use of the of that which is contrary to nature what is he saying well he's saying now these women are laying with women sleeping together loving each other sexually immorality and then it says in verse 27 and likewise also the males. See, y'all thought y'all was getting away. I'll, I'll cover y'all too. And likewise also the males, leaving the natural use of the female, burned their, uh, what burned in their craving toward one another. Males with males committing unseemliness and abominations. And fully receiving themselves the retribution of their error, which is due, the death, which is due to those who practice those things. And even as they did not approve of holding God in their full knowledge, God gave them up to disprove or reparate minds to do the things which are what? Not fitting. Being filled with what all unrighteousness, wickedness, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malignity, whispers, slanders, hateful to God, insolent. That sounded like that son earlier. But arrogant, boasters, inventions, or inventors of what? Evil things. 
disobedient to who? To parents, senseless, faithless, affectionless, mercilessness, who though fully knowing the righteousness judgment of God, knowing that God is true and righteous, knowing that there is a God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death. Y'all got some friends who, who, who act this way and are in that way? God said that they deserve death. Not only do them, but also have fellow delight in those who practice them. And also, like, if you even like those people and, and have fellowship with those and, 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 and enjoying and don't mind what they're doing. It's okay what they're doing. You turn a blind eye to that. Oh, that's to each his own. No, that's a lie. Read it for yourself. Don't fall for the trap. Amen? 52 minutes in already. I'm about done. I'm about done. Here you go. You can have it. Paul says in chapter 3 of the book of Romans, verse 7, he says, But if the truthfulness of God has abounded in my lie unto his glory, why still am I also judged as a sinner? What is he saying? He's basically saying, look, I can't be telling a, a lie and expecting y'all to understand or get the truth out of the lie that God going to get glorified in my lie. That don't work that way. I'm a man of God. If God cannot lie, I'm a man of God. I cannot lie. Just like John the Baptist, he's a man that came in righteousness in the way of righteousness. He couldn't lie, but they, you know, some of them didn't believe him. Jesus came in the way of righteousness, but they didn't believe him. They accept the wine bibbers and the gluttons, they said, but they wouldn't accept Jesus. Uh, 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 uh. So, you know, those things. Look at verse uh, uh, um, 10, chapter 11 uh, of Second Corinthians, write it down. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Look at verse 10. Look at verse 10 of Second Corinthians chapter 11. Look at verse 10. What does it say? The truthfulness of Christ is in who? In me, Paul is saying. I'm saying the same thing today. It's in me. I'm trying to tell you about it. He said, the truthfulness of Christ is in me that this boasting shall not be stopped as it regards me in the regions of our care. Why? Because I do not love you. And God knows. That's not the case. I do love you. But what I do, I also will do that I may cut off the opportunity of those what? Discern the or design the opportunity that in the thing in which they boast, they may be found even as we. For such uh, ones are false what? Apostles, or false teachers, deceitful workers, transfiguring what? Themselves into the apostle of who? Of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself what? Transfigures himself into what? The angel of light. You see, the truth even looks like a lie. Therefore, it is no great thing if also his ministers transfigure themselves into the ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. In other words, you got a lot of these preachers out here today in these denominational places. You got the Pope dressed up. You got people kissing his ring. You got uh, 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 um, Daddy Grace who used to be crazy. And you got all these crazy folk preaching the word of God. Satan's transformers. All these ministers of Satan's transform themselves into uh, ministers of Christ. And they're preaching every Sunday, trying to tell you a lie that you don't believe because you're going there every Sunday. I'm going to say it to you one more time. You can have it. God cannot lie. Therefore, I'm a representative of God. I cannot lie and I will not lie. You got to hear God's word, believe God's word, repent of your sins, confess Jesus as Lord and Savior of the world, be baptized in the water and grave for the remissions of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and you will be added to the one body, the only body, the church of Christ, the body, the church that's in the Bible, the church that was prophesied to come. Hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. Romans 10, 15, 10 um, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Hebrews 11, 6, for without faith 
It is impossible to please him, but he that cometh to him must believe that he is God, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Then you must repent, Luke 13, 3. Unless you um, repent, you shall likewise perish. Matthew 10, 13, you got to confess Christ. Nine, Romans 9, 10, uh, uh, 10, 9, you got to uh, confess Christ. Matthew 10, 13, 33, tell you, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father which is in heaven. But if you deny me, I will deny you also before my Father which is in heaven. He makes it personal. You got to speak up for yourself. Save yourself from this untoward generation. You got to save yourself. We try to we lay out the prerequisites for you. We're doing them now. Here, believe, repent, confess Christ, and then get baptized in this watery grave for what? For the remissions of your sins. A lot of people out there telling that lie that baptism is not essential for salvation. Well, I'm here to tell you the truth about that lie. That baptism is essential for salvation. Acts 2 and 38, Peter tells, repent every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for what? For the remissions of your sins. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of your sins. Every one of y'all, get in that water. You do that thing, you, you receive the gift of the Lord's Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit himself. Then the Lord in Acts 2, 47, he will himself add you to the body if you're being saved. So, you heard it today. Brother Reggie told you the truth about the lie. I pray that you who are listening, you who are watching, that y'all was encouraged. If you got a question, call the numbers that you hear, uh, at, uh, that you see at the, uh, scrolling down at the, uh, in the, uh, at the bottom of the screen at the end of the service. Take communion and, and give and, and visit uh, 1310 Lilia Jones uh, Recreation Center over there on 1310 Lord. Uh, North Stricker Street, Sandtown, West Baltimore, Church of Christ over there. Sandtown Church of Christ is in West Baltimore. Brother Davis Worley, the evangelist over there, Davis Worley, his fine congregation. He told me that Brother Burrell said hello and is thankful that he allowed me yet again to send you God's word. I hope you heard today and I hope you took some notes. Got any questions? Feel free to call. Amen. May God bless you and continue to smile upon you until the next time. Sandtown, Church of Christ, West Baltimore. Amen. This is Brother Reggie Burrell signing off. The truth about the lies. Good to know the truth. That way you can identify the lie. Powerful message from our beloved brother Reggie Burrell. Friends, on behalf of the Church of Christ in Sandtown, West Baltimore, Maryland. I'd like to thank the many churches of Christ that supported our worship today and thank you for joining us. Friends, if you would like a personal Bible study or have any questions, any questions at all about anything you heard today, contact information for the Church of Christ in Sandtown, West Baltimore, Maryland, and other churches of Christ in your area will be displayed at the end of this live stream. Friends, we encourage you to visit a church of Christ near you. Visit a church of Christ near you as soon as, as it is safe to do so. And you tell them that Brother Worley sent you. Friends, if you'd like to support our work here, our mission in Sandtown, West Baltimore, Maryland, please note our GoFundMe page and Cash App and you can make your contributions there. Friends, we encourage you and the churches of Christ all over the world to keep the faith. Don't give up hope and know that God is willing and able to do all things. Friends, I'm Evangelist Davis Worley, and until we meet again, God bless, keep, and comfort you and reveal the truth in his word, just like Brother Bur Reggie Burrell told us today. Reveal the truth in his word that it might open your understanding and cause you to consider your relationship with God and Christ before it is eternally too late. Be blessed and be safe. Oh,
Jesus. 